right, everybody. I've got electrolytes. So you know it's going to go good. You know what I'm saying? what plants crave. Any talks coming up? I am giving a talk in a couple of weeks. It's a very short talk. It's like 10 minutes. And that's at like a small event. It's probably not being recorded, but when I get back from that, I'll probably do like a public version on the internet. But it's not really going to have very much that most people following this stream don't know, except what am I saying? Most people following the stream are JavaScript programmers, but it's basically a talk about, you know, how do you architect modern software for performance and extensibility? Right. Okay. Last night off stream, I did some stuff and because I'm trying to refactor the way things happen and the problem is the stuff that I did did not completely work. You're looking at yourselves right now. Oh, dang it. That's the uh, windows is hard, guys. All right. So, see, this spotlight is kind of working, but it's kind of not working because there was supposed to be a big cookie mesh, like, blocking this circle that the dude's in. And we don't, we don't see that big cookie mesh. wondering how best to debug this and I think it, it could they could be brutal and take a long time or maybe it'll go fast I don't know anyway
So this light source is obviously there. It's that doodad and Now the thing is, I don't see the little cookie mesh that's supposed to be blocking it, which is weird. Oh, there it is. So this, oh, it's multiple cookie meshes. So really any one of them so this is flagged visible for shadows. Like what if I just take out the invisible? Oh, now it works. So it's, it's like, It's just visible for shadows not working for some reason. That's a very easy problem. I mean, relative to what it could have been. Relative to what it could have been. Okay, easy clap. Easy clap. What is happening now? So wait, we have light map visible, but not, okay, hold on. Cube shadow map. If it's got the invisibility mask and not shadow visible, Wait, is this a cube shadow? Hold on. It doesn't look like a cube shadow. It looks like a spotlight. Am I looking in the wrong place? Point light. I actually don't know which of these I feel like we should not be spending a cube map on this, right? But all of these check the same stuff. Hmm. 
So what happened was I converted both of these functions. <clears throat> Basically, all of these functions are written the same way, or were, including these two. And they all dumped their visibility info into a central visibility structure. I do not want it to work that way. So I'm breaking them all back out. Now, so I have separate visibilities for these. And then we're using those separate visibilities down here. Oh, you know what it is. I fucking didn't. Okay. I, I think I need to do this. I think, I think. This is actually going to cause some redundant entity rendering for a minute, but yeah, you know, sometimes I feel like streaming and sometimes I don't. And today, it was a good way to get up and get in gear and really just go. Okay, see, I don't, I don't know why that didn't fix it. See that as soon as, as soon as we put invisible, they show up. Near, 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 near. Near, 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 near. What up? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Wasn't I typing a comment over here? I never finished this comment, I just realized. At... Okay.
So what the problem is, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of this and replace it with a bunch of these. And the weird thing happening right now is that we're seeing the thing on the screen if it shows up in this visibility list I think I mean we could verify this is maybe it's not even showing up in these these ones Let's at least figure out if it's cube shadow map or not. I'm just going to comment this out. Wait, not even that. Um, I'm just going to comment this out. Just to verify that that is what we were talking about here. So now we should see nothing in that shadow map. I should almost set up a level that's faster to load and test, but... Wait, we see things in the shadow map. Okay. So... It must be the other one, the other shadow map pass. So this is not using a cube, which is good. So you don't need to use a cube map for this because it's all in one direction, but I had thought that like, oh, maybe we are anyway, because we're being inefficient right now because we haven't shipped. But no, we're still seeing all the things. So I think it's this one. If it's not either of these, then I really don't know what's going on. Really? Don't know what's going on. Okay, so now we don't see anything. So it is that other one. Still a bug in the elevators. Anyway. So it's Viz Shadow Map is the problem. Okay, so that tells us where to debug, to debuge. What if I just put zero as the invisibility mask? Question is, where is the invisibility, the invisible flag confounding us? Oh, it all works. Wait, really? It was that easy. Okay, hold on. Now, if I took this out, I think it required both of these things, right? So if I take this out, 
Now it doesn't work again. No, it still does. Bro. Oh, because... Okay. No, I know why. Because we flag it in the other thing. Okay, this is fine for now. We will fix this in a minute. But first... So... This is very weird. It means I just screwed up the if statement, really. This happens, oh gosh, this happens no matter what. Okay, no, I get it. Okay, here's, we're trying to use our bitch and macros that we have in this programming language to like insert this clause as the visibility test, all right? But I, w I was just looking at that and I wasn't looking at that this is there regardless because the thing that we insert goes down here. So if yeah, um, So I'm putting do sky here because um, because I'm going to explain it later. All right, so we're going to go back here. We're going to put our invisibility mask back. Hey, it's all good. That's wonderful. Okay. So that's fixed. Um, let's go back and explain. Um, in the sky, in the things that want sky, we are rendering an actual uh, an actual final image like scene and in those we tend to want to do this don't have to put have to put it in each routine's code. Um, shadow maps, for example, want a different criterion wherein they uh, check some other flags. Um, 
That said, it's weird that we test this at a later time, that we test those flags. We test that visibility at a later time. We could instead pass two different code directives, one for visibility. Um, but maybe that seems excessive and will go away eventually. Simplify this. Okay, now one other thing I want to do. Because, like I said, we're doing more. Uh, we're doing some redundant entity rendering now. It's like, because for performance, so I want to split all this stuff up, but for performance reasons, until I change like the flagging, that's going to be real bad. Um, so I've got to change the flagging. think maybe that's not happening Uh, okay, I know what to do. Oh, wait, not even... I'm, I'm looking at the wrong, wrong thing. I want to be looking up here. Okay, so add to viz output. So we're going to get rid of that bit flagging later, but um, yeah. Whoops. I wanted to grab this comment here and do this. There we go. End tier, it's like a Seder. Well, not Seder, not the Jewish thing, but the, the pagan thing. Okay, so 
this is actually good. It looks not good because all the shadows are gone. But it is good because we're not saying to draw them. And before, they were being drawn because they were excessively um, in the other render list. So now, now, the question is, when I go back over here, do they come back? And if they do, we are Gucci. Fog moves with the elevator. It's it's not supposed to. Hey, check it out. How nice. How nice. Okay, so. Well, um, this is pretty good. So now the experiment is, can we do this? Oh boy, we're getting, we're getting somewhere. Why five FPS? It's actually eight FPS, sir. Okay. So there's so many layers of cruft we're going to remove. Like, so basically this break upage that I'm doing, I want to do across all of these things. Then we'll probably run a Benny test or something in debug mode, which will be a little slow. Um, and then we'll check that in. But this whole like, oh, oh, yeah, I don't know. I want to sort of get rid of the, Buffering, which maybe we can do for the shadow cases. Anyway. This is pretty good. Um, I just I just want to keep doing that to all the things. Now, I'm having a little bit of a crisis of do I check this in or do I keep going? But I think I keep going. I think it'll hopefully be straightforward to convert everything else. Now, um, if I go here, for example, we can see the mirror reflected in the water. That's going to be our next test because we're going to break out that pass. All right, and we're going to do it as follows. Oh, you know what? Hold on before we do that. Okay, the question is, can I move this here? And the answer is I'm pretty sure yes. It's like if I properly cleaned out the dependencies, we could do that later. I literally just changed what level I'm starting up on. Okay, cool. And that means that surely I can do this. Surely I can bubble all these visibility passes down to here. Okay, so here's the thing that we're doing. Um, this code was architected with the idea that, for example, if you do all the visibility in stages, 
and then you do all the command buffer like all together and then you do all the command buffer stuff all together and so forth that it'll be easier to run that on multiple processors and that is true in a sense but you can't actually get performance that way <laughs> and so i'm re-architecting it to be maximally um pipelined right so like in when you're rendering a frame like this there are natural serial dependencies that happen right like look i want to render out some shadow maps because i want to project those shadows onto some surfaces to emulate sunlight and so forth right so you have to know what the shadows are before you then go try to draw the surface that has the shadow on it um so uh the way you make a system fast is that when there are serial dependencies like that you satisfy the dependencies as quickly as possible right if you know what the shadows are fig figure them out before you go doing visibility for the main scene even right because you don't care about that yet you're not ready to draw the main scene yet do the shadows and so we're refactoring it back this way and in some sense this is a more smooth what smooth brain dumb way to write the code but like very often that's just way better all right So that's what we're doing right now. Mr. Streamer, you need a scene graph. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cube shadows. Okay. So really... Now what I'm going to do, we're just going to keep on doing this. We're going to go, um, actually this thing here too. This kind of rides with these because they're all using that. Let's make sure that still compiles. Wait. Visibility is used. Oh, because visibility start. Right, never mind. Um, does visibility start need to use that? No, it doesn't need that parameter, I don't think. No, it does not. Does it need manager? No. Does it need offsets? Yes. I mean, just rid of offsets once we get rid of the bits, which we are hopefully going to be able to do today. Okay, so visibility start doesn't need these other parameters. In fact, it probably doesn't need views. Oh, well, it does for that. Offsets and views. It doesn't need this mask or collision view type. Let's get rid of all these things. See how we make code better at Code Better Labs? See how we do that? All right. Now... Planar shadows, cube shadows, visibility, reflection plane, main light probe, etc. Okay, so you'll note in this form of the function, which is the old form, we pass in this visibility record as a pointer that, you know, it's this thing, and we pass it in and write stuff to it. And in the new form, um, I'm just returning a separate one for each of these as opposed to accumulating into one. And so we're going to do a new thing where we say viz reflection plane is this. And we go back here and the reflection plane is going to be rewritten like shadow map here to where it, I mean, not really rewritten. It's going to get a few small changes. So we return a thing instead of passing the pointer. All right. 
we um, declare it, we return it, and in we tell the new calling loop to do this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, this point lights thing is not even, okay, hold on. Let's do one change at a time. Yeah, okay, so in render frame, this does not take that parameter anymore because we just deleted it. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, but this doesn't have reflections. This does. Dang it, guys. Oh, you know why? Because I forgot one piece of the puzzle. Um, I forgot this piece right here. Oh, hello, rating people. We are typing keystrokes into video game computer machine. We are making video game happen. And listening to people complain about the frame rate of our debug build. Hey, look. Wonderful. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. So, cube shadows, planar shadows, reflection plane. We're just going to keep doing that, right? Main scene. Oh, actually, hold on. Before we do that, I want, this was a thing I tried to do last night when I was debugging something, and it was the wrong thing. I had a theory about what was wrong, and the theory was wrong. The theory was wrong. Okay. Hey, check it out. We got a guy again. Hey, check it out. We got a mirror again. That's great. Um, now we keep bubbling it down. So we're going to push this to here. We're going to say viz main is this. We're going to get rid of this parameter. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. All right. The main scene. And then stuff that really should not be in here as some kind of sequential thing. These are really variants on the main scene. So why are we treating them differently? All right, so now we got to go back over here, go into visibility main. We do this, we do this, we do this. We say the there, we return out, and we tell new calling loop about this.
Okay, well... I certainly broke something right there. It's very weird because... Everything is rendering? It's just the... The colors are wrong. Why is that? Oh, you know what? I wonder if there's something that's happening in visibility and... Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so visibility end... We're going to do this because we don't, we don't want this part. We don't want this part. But I think we do want this. But for now, we're going to call this. didn't even have the right parameters. Okay. By the way, I totally screwed this up. I'm astonished that any of this frickin' worked because, oh my God. So this, is supposed to be up here. Um, Okay, hang on. Hang on, guys. Reflection plane. We do the visibility. We set up the views, and then we render the entities. The main scene. We do the visibility. We set up the views. And then we render the entities. Oh, my God, guys. So badge all the things that are happening here. 
so bad. I I was really goofing. You know how they have like Goofus and Gallant? And they say, don't be like Gallant, be like Goofus. I'm being like Goofus right now. Alright. Actually. For avoidance of doubt, we are doing all these things. Dang it. I did something wrong. Update light pro parameters. We're probably asserting that I did it twice or something. Let me, okay, let me not do this. Maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe it does matter. Okay, we have a scene and scene and scene. All right. Hey, we see the little reflected mirror. Hmm, we see the little shadow shadow mappers. It's all good. It's all good. That's great. Um, all right, well, let's delete this then. I was mistaken about needing to do that. So this is good. We're just bubbling the thing down. Light probe, shore map, and baker. Now, the annoying things about these three is these are not really components of the main scene. They happen in the editor, which is why I'm saying like, why are they here? And they're here because we like tag, we tag renders that way, but I don't think they should be tagged that way. But this is tremendous progress. Yesterday, I wasn't even sure that we would get to where we are now today. And we have, so this is good. So roadmap. Continue what we're doing and just break these into little chunks like this. Three more chunks to go. And then what? Then we go into some of the things that we're calling and we restructure that. This is a big job. It's a lot of restructuring. Okay. You must have strong jaw to video game program.
Okay. Light probe for the probity. What's it called? Light probe. Why was I not finding this? All right. We're returning this. We're doing this. We're returning it. Um, we're doing this. Render frame six seventy nine. That's a good reason to move the code above because we can't accidentally use the wrong variable that's not declared yet, which I literally did. In fact, a good way, a good way to avoid copy pastas is the following. Because then they're scoped, and because you use scope mouthwash and your breath isn't bad, the variables cannot be incorrectly used later due to tooth decay. You know what I mean? Okay. We'll even scope these, even though these are going to move in a minute. Any more been planned for today? I mean, sometimes you morb, sometimes the morbing is internal, you know? Like, not all morbing is flamboyant and on display for all to see. Okay. So now, there's these things in the game called light probes that we use to light a scene. These are examples of the light probes. And we can move one around. If I move one, see, it's got a baked version of the scene in it. So if I move it over here, you see sort of the image on the probe doesn't really change. All right, but I'm going to put it down here by this yellow. You should see a lot of yellow reflected there, but you do not. Okay, but now we'll update the light probe. And we pause for a minute for some reason. I don't know why this takes so long. We're probably filtering it. And it has adjusted the scene, and I still don't see a lot of yellow. Maybe it didn't work. Hang on. Maybe it's too close to the ground anyway. Update. I mean, it definitely, definitely changed the image. Oh, these are gameplay objects, so we don't draw them in light probes, guys. So what we need to do to make sure the light probe is, is updating is now, it's questionable whether we should put those in light probes, but um, let's just, let's get our freak on with these colors. And then we'll update the light probe. Wait, why did that? Okay, well, it went fast that time. So you see now, we can look in the light probe and we can see the different colored things. Just how you know it's working. See that? The, 
the colors have morbed onto the sphere. Graphics is pretty cool, guys. I just want to say it's pretty fun and interesting to work on rendering. Okay, shore map. We don't currently generate shore maps, so I can't really test it, but we're just gonna do the same things. I think Dennis is experimenting with shore maps. Um, It's just too bad we have to deal with GPUs and drivers to do graphics. That's the only problem. Okay, so shore map. I was wondering where that went. I didn't paste it back. They're just doing the same thing we done been doing. Oh, I forgot the parameter here, by the way. Oh, and then okay. Uh, and then Baker is the last one. We can test Baker. Guys, I forgot this part. <gasps> ah, that would have been bad. Because I was looking at that for the baker, because I was commenting it down here. All right. Okay. So we got to go Viz Baker here. Got to go Viz Baker here. Do this. Go back here. We go. There. We go there, return out, and we go uh, output is out. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Visibility Baker. Visibility 
end. So this visibility end now Oh, I got to test the baker, sorry. So what we could do is let's make let's make a little hut Nope, no, no. Nope. I keep hitting the wrong button. Okay, I'm going to cut out this. I'm going to put another layer on top. I'm going to cut out that. I'm going to put another layer on top. I'm going to make this a very dark color. Okay. And then we're going to rebake this piece of land. Oh, come on, bro. What the fuck? This is what happens when you let other people write UI code. I can't do anything. That, so... The whole reason I wrote GetRect and I'm in the process of converting all the game's UI over to GetRect is because of shit like that kept happening. And I was like, guys, so I think that's actually probably saved in a file that way. And I'm hosed unless I go edit the file or something. Oh. That's bad. Do I want to debug? Let's see what this is. This seems bad. Oh, this is get wrecked. Okay. I thought that was going to have to do. Okay. Yeah. So. Someone is getting an email. No, um, the, the people who did this have not been at the company for years. Um, it's just fucking pisses me off, right? Like, it's so hard. I mean, I don't know. It's okay. It's actually subtle. And um, it's subtle. Okay. Because the thing is, what is happening right now is a failure mode of the whole idea of how the original UI system was put together that was not intended but the problem is the failure mode was not thought about. And it was like, oh, let's just do this thing. And it's like years later, I'm trying to do work and I can't work now because of this, right? So it's like there's a mindset where when you make software, you think about how it is likely to be non-robust and think about what might go wrong with it. And like, uh, do, do better. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to scissor to a negative size. And the question is, should we defensively prevent that? Like somebody passed us a rect with negative size because the window was too fucking small. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set a breakpoint here. And we're just going to manually fix our panel. 
We'll worry about this other stuff later. Anyway, so, but this is one of the big problems and it's not that easy to solve because it's a mindset, right? It's like, you have to have the mindset. If I program this thing, what is actually going to happen? And you, you have to, it helps a lot to have that mindset. There's a control M in this file. Good thing. See, see what I'm talking about? Like just shit is falling down everywhere and I'm trying to work. All right. So the panel has some screwed up variables in it. For some reason, having to do with changing displays or who even knows. All right. <clears throat> I don't even know if changing these variables is going to help, but uh, we're going to try. Hey, look, now it's way too big, but that's fine. We can work with way too big. What we cannot work with is way too small. Uh, let's, let's just make it less tall. like all right so we're once again in business it, this is more motivation for me to go and convert all this over to get wrecked again um the thing is i'm in the middle of doing rendering stuff right okay i think i saved out this so i wanted to just select some ground here, which is, I think, well within the box. And I just wanted to push this one button that says bake light maps. That's all I wanted to do. I mean, it's, and it's not, I don't know, software engineering is hard. I don't mean to give the impression I don't mean to give the wrong impression. It's just, this is part of the art of it is designing systems that don't, literally don't do what you just saw. Okay, so we bake the light map and you'll notice it's darker than the surrounding area. It's not maybe as much darker as you would expect, um, which I kind of wonder about, but that's consistent with my observations before that that's what happens. So like, I kind of feel like we want to tune the light maps in some way, but um, oh, let's go to light map view. That's actually probably, it's probably because it's getting so much direct sunlight, right? Like actually, if I unhide this and I lift it up, yeah, okay, so there you go. You can see the difference where this thing was in this dark box. So it's like, it's got, well, okay, maybe the light map bake completely failed, but I think it's because there was no light because it was in a dark box. So let's bring it back. Now this thing is hovering above, so this should get some light. Unless, I, yeah, there we go. See? See guys, sometimes computers can work. Not always. They cannot always work. Sometimes they can, though. All right. So let me delete the entity that I put. I think my light panel is going to be messed up again.
Okay. Um, so I just want to delete this. All right. So this is good, guys, because we have got to the place. Um, where I wanted to get by like the end of the day. It ain't even noon. So that's good news. Now, that just means the agenda can push forward. However, we're going to run Benny test in debug mode for a little bit and see if we get any weird command buffer scenarios because it's quite possible. Like, what are the odds that I really did this correctly? Not that high. Do I need to rebake? No, because I didn't save it out. I should fix some of those tests. We have a bunch of tests that fail right at the beginning because they don't load or something. Those are. about what is going on in the universe. Good thing our electrolytes helped us. Oh, oh, we just had a breakpoint when we smashed something. Okay, let's get rid of all our weird breakpoints that might be hanging around. I came back, I was like, oh, it crashed. No, nope, not a crash. Not a crash. Just a How much am I involved in the hard side? I want you to think of as like the creative director, which includes making sure that the art direction meshes with the basic idea of what we're trying to do. But I don't do day-to-day um, -day art direction, right? Game sound. First, everyone complains that they can't hear Casey, and then they're like, oh, game sound. Okay, this is that same Pack Lilies thing. It's on the list. Doesn't have anything to do with what we're working on. Um, does need to get fixed, but not about rendering.
Is there one shadow cube map per point line? What's a point line? Do you sample from all of them during opaque pass? Is there one shadow cube map per point line? I don't quite understand the question, but the way that you typically do this, right? So you have a light source. You have a, a oh, point light. That's what you mean. So generally speaking, if your point light doesn't cast shadows, you can't use it that well because the light will just leak through things and it'll be horrible. So most point lights have shadow maps associated with them. However, we give you the ability not to do that because it's cheaper not to. And if you just want a light to give a general impression of things, sometimes you can get away with not casting shadows, but usually you can't. Um, so yeah, like in order for that light to act normally in the scene, it needs to cast shadows, which means you need to have maybe a cube map if it's omnidirectional enough, or if the point light, if, if it's more like a spotlight, um, it could be like a planar shadow because, you know, it all fits on the plane. But yeah, you pretty much, you pretty much need shadows. Is the art supervision for this game like that on the witness? Um, it's similar. I probably delegate more now for this game. But like, I always kind of had to delegate because I don't, I just don't model or texture. So just the details of those skills and what you do in practice when you're thinking about making things, I just don't know those things. So you have to sample from all the shadow maps in the pixel shader. Yeah, so, okay, if you have some point in the scene and there are three lights shining on it, well, you want the contribution from all those lights. And like we said, you also need shadows to happen. Otherwise, the lights aren't going to work very well. So, yeah, you would end up sampling from all three of those shadow maps per pixel in the scene for everything lit by those. And so then, you know, if you're rendering a scene like this with a bunch of stuff in it, um, it's important then to uh, you know, if you have like nine shadow maps in your scene, like point lights with shadow maps, and each of them only shines on some stuff, you want to try to make sure you only do the work for the things that are affected by that particular light. Okay, I'm. This, is, this has been fine. I think we're far enough to realize that I haven't, I haven't drastically broken things super bad. So I think it's ready to, uh, I just want to manually jump around. Because the thing about, 
the thing about the automated test is some of the levels render really weird, you know, because the scene is still fading in and stuff, and uh, we probably should fix that. But uh, so, you know, if I just go here, for example, this looks, I see all the objects. It's pretty good. Should the fails in a level test be fixed quickly since they are gameplay related? Why don't you go run a game company and you can execute whatever policy you would like with regard to testing? Did we get raided? We got a 50 person raid. Am I self-taught? I mean, I went to college for computer science, but I knew a bunch of programming before that. I got substantially more discipline in college and that was good. And I learned better concepts, but I also didn't get a degree. Um, so I don't know myself and basically everything in games that I know I'm self-taught. Okay, now what? Now what? How do you keep yourself from distractions like social media? Uh, don't, don't get distracted by social media. What's the problem? <laughs> like, okay. Do we have no check-ins is the question. We do have one. Oh, that, oh, oh, oh. Um, actually, this part's fine. This part's fine. I think we can, um, I'm going to put an if do sky here. I need my Emacs to be better. So, The animation updating, I need to do something about. Okay, this visibility end, nobody is calling this anymore, right? Visibility end, gone. Okay, so this is...
okay. Okay. Can I explain why deferred rendering is so bad? Um, for extremely dense geometry with high O. What do you th think? So... I guess you're saying high overdraw because if pixels are really expensive, you save it. But like rendering front to back gets rid of most overdraw. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean, right? Because you like what your GPU does early Z reject, right? And so it knows if a pixel is going to be visible before it shades it. Okay, so the problem is I am no longer doing this thing. Okay. We're going to do something horrible. Like what, do we just, are we just not animating monsters right now? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. We are no longer animating monsters. I predicted it. Okay. So let's fix that, shall we? Okay, um, so invisibility start, we're going to say Should have clipped this name. Okay. So Ooh. 
Is it called Render Entities? What's it called? Render Entities. Oh, wait. No, that's Render Entity. Render Entity. Okay. If... Okay, we update the dude's animation right here. Hey, look, they're animating, guys. You too can have monsters in your game. Ah, he got me. You too can have monsters in your game. Okay. Great, so I think we're going to commit. Oh, God, my tea is still steeping, guys. This is going to be some, we're going to need some milk, is all I'm saying. All right, um, next phase of visibility refactor. Okay, I am so happy, guys, because look, games like this, they're really complicated. And when you have a team working on something, like knowledge gets compartmentalized, and then I feel like I don't, understand how anything works right even though i wrote the entire original version of this engine when it was much simpler you know people take it and they do stuff with it and it gets complicated real fast and so to just be able to go in and change a bunch of stuff around this like this and have it work this well is really nice that's all i'm trying to say there i have hardly any honey we're scraping the bottom of the barrel for the honey. Uh oh. The Hunzo is Dunzo.
I will say, I do seem to have a lot of spare Chick-fil-A sauce. So that's a whole scenario. That's a whole thing to think about. sure that Chick-fil-A barbecue sauce is good in tea, but if it were, we would be set. How do you balance that aspect? Because making game alone is quite a massive effort. It is quite a massive effort, but the better you get at it, the easier it is. I think you just gotta be good and then do what you're able to do. You've gotta, you know, <clears throat> yeah, making games, it's hard. Notice the running you've worked on is both forward and deferred. Deferred is used for the vast geometry. Vast majority of the opaque geometry. Why? What, what kind of rendering is it? Like the problem with deferred, here's the basic problem with deferred rendering, right? As the quality of your rendering goes up, um, the amount of information that you process per pixel goes up, right? So like what's the diffuse color? What's the specular, you know, parameter, right? What material is it? Like all, all these things you just, it's more and more information, right? Now, the thing about deferred rendering is the basic idea is that you store that information per pixel into a buffer and then later come along and apply light to it, right? But as the amount of information goes up and up, it becomes more and more expensive to store this temporary copy of all the information just to not do the lighting on it, which by the way, gets relatively cheaper over time. Um, so it just, it kind of just doesn't that much make sense. Fully expected me to start the stream title with Emacs. Yeah. Well, we, we don't want to encourage the people. Okay. Let me just check because I am doing so many heavy duty things. I want to check to make sure that I'm not getting a bunch of emails saying like, oh my God, the whole game is broken. It's a very realistic possibility. I've certainly faced that scenario before.
Yeah, so we just have someone reporting. You know how the other day, maybe it was even yesterday, we noticed flickering happening. Someone's like, hey, there's flickering happening. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's due to what we're doing right now. It could be, though. It, to be honest, it could be. Um, let's go find the flicker. It's weird because there's multiple components. Of what's happening here. This is really strange. It seems to be that the distortion map is uh, Flickering on and off, but not the whole thing. Some Sorry guys, I'm finishing this email. So I also I also mentioned in the email on the palette level. Yeah, see that
Okay. If other people don't manage to look into this, we could take a look at it later. I just don't want to derail from what I'm doing right now. I mean, it looks to me like the geometry just isn't rendering on some frames. Um, it's extra hard to decode because if it renders first, like if you look at this arm on the left, like the gauntleted arm, you sort of see different colors behind it, like blue or whatever. And I think that's because it's the sky behind it. Because if it draws first and writes into the Z buffer, but we don't write the color, then um, you know we don't draw the things underneath. So yeah, there's something going on there. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna not look at that yet. We can always binary search the build if we have to, to figure out exactly which update this happened in. Okay. I mean, one thing, you know, let's do one small thing out of curiosity, right? So if we go to the materials on this character, Um, so is it simple gold? It's probably simple gold is that one, right? Um, Metal simple gold. The shader is basic. It's probably got some flags. I don't know. I haven't edited shaders in a while. Okay. Pixel shader. Wow, I feel like... Um, I feel like everybody, all right. Basic pixel shader. Let's just say Return vec four one 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 one. Okay, now. Okay, well, you see. Is it flickering still? It is. So, I mean, I'm not staring at her boobs. I'm looking at the thing, guys. So try to slow down time. This isn't going to be a time thing. So these things are still flickering regardless of the PBR shaderness, which means it's like a material setup problem. I don't know. Okay. I just wanted to investigate that really fast. Um, We're, we're going to hope that somebody else can take a look at that and debug it. If they can't, we'll take a look at it and debug it um, later. I just want to keep going at what I'm going on because we want to keep the momentum going. Um, so the momentum what oh. So I believe I just checked this in. I want to rename one of the files. Right, we have this file called Determine Visibilities, which is a really long name. I just want to call it Visibility. It's just, it's shorter. I 
also the functions are all called visibility underscore whatever so it's like easier to it's one less idea to think about right is visibility visibility pass just a check between an entity's bounding box and the lights frustum well or the camera frustum or whatever yeah and it not necessarily a bounding box we're using bounding spheres for these The entity's lights that don't move are just done once. Um, the camera moves, right, a little bit, which maybe shouldn't matter, but, eh, you know. The, okay, so here's the thing. Okay. So this game has a lot of different things going on, right? It's got different kinds of levels different kinds of scenes like this level that we're just looking at right now for example i need to work on debug build startup time but yeah again once we go to a better back end okay so this is a lot of the levels in the game the vast majority are like this where it takes place on one screen the screen is um pretty straightforward the camera moves a little bit, but like even the amount of camera motion here, you wouldn't worry about. Basically for this kind of scene, you don't actually need to visibility call at all because it's not like there's a ton of stuff over here that you don't want to see, right? It's just like, this is fine, right? Now, So you could get into optimizing this, like, oh my God, we need to do a bunch of stuff to make this good. And the thing is, this is not the kind of a scene where that's, like this is an easy scene for us. It doesn't matter that it's most of the levels. What we need to make sure runs well are the hard scenes. And the hard scenes have cameras that pan all over like this really big level and stuff, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing right now as well. So all this refactoring that we're doing right now is um, I'm sort of undoing things. Some of the things that I'm undoing were done because of ideas about what to optimize that I don't think are correct because they don't impact our difficult scenes. They only impact our easy scenes and who cares about the easy scenes. So here's another one. Here's one that I'm going to try to do today. Okay, so um, what's the name of this level? Uh, you know, like this. No, that's not what I wanted. Um, I don't remember the names of my own levels. Can I, okay, like, like this one, like this one, let's take this one. It's easier to look at. So you've got a dude here. You've got a scene. The scene is rendered six times, actually probably nine times. Cause you know, the bottom of the ocean is there. And so there's this stuff in the engine that's like, oh, because we're rendering each of these things nine times, we can render them instanced, right? And save time. And that makes things more complicated and it's determined the structure of these loops and all this stuff. The problem is, if you look at, okay, so this scene doesn't have final art on it, but imagine the island was nice and whatever. It doesn't matter that we're drawing the same thing nine times because it might as well, in terms of the amount of stuff we need to be able to draw for the game to work well, it might as well be nine different islands with stuff on it, right? We need to handle that case. And so the fact that you could theoretically instance things in this case and maybe get a little bit of speed, although that you usually don't get that as a win because the extra complexity of your system outweighs the speed that you thought you got. It doesn't matter because like this scene is strictly easier than, you know, 
then this scene, there's like, there's different objects all over this scene. It's not the same stuff instanced. And so optimizing for instancing for levels like that is not actually going to make the game better, right? And it's, this is the kind of decision making that apparently is kind of subtle and difficult. And it's why it's really important to understand your project very well, actually. Otherwise, these decisions will come out wrong. We need to write a level browser. Well, we have, um, you know, we can go do this if I ever want to know. Um, we can go view uh, large icons. I mean, you know. Here's, here's our level browser written by Bill Gates. Thanks, Bill. Good on you, mate. It's a little slow, I know. I know. It doesn't use Python so that it can use NumPy in parallel. That's why it's slow. All right, so... Uh, Is instancing necessary for the game? Is it important enough to warrant extra complexity? Um, I mean, what I'm saying is I don't think so. I, my inclination would be to take it out. The question is though, you know, some of these scenes with lots of objects in them do use the same objects many times. And like, it might be worth maintaining instancing. But the problem is each of those entities can have a bunch of different parameters that vary per instance anyway. And then if the instancing doesn't take that into account, it's very limiting. And so my, my inclination is not to bother and to take it out, but I need to talk to the, the dude working on the back end and say like, Hey, would removing the instancing help or whatever? feels like premature optimization. Well, I mean, I don't know about premature because the goal, the goal was to architect a rendering engine that's good for this game and or games like this. It's just, um, I just don't think it's the correct technical, like, you know, you do technical design when you, decide what to make, right? And it's, it, um, I'm adjusting the technical design is what I would say. Okay, have we even compiled since I renamed that file? We have now, all right. So I'm gonna go rename a file. Oh, that's, that's in the compiler, bro. Rename a file. Sort of means though I didn't uh, I didn't check in something in the compiler, which is badge. Okay, um, so now we have this file. Okay, so we're actually using some pretty advanced language features. We're using auto bakes. We're using code insertions. It's good shit, guys. Like, I dig it. I kind of want to cut down the number of parameters here, but we'll do that. We'll do that after. We need to get rid of the flagging. 
so this entry um so right now these bits our goal is to get rid of these bits they encode two things they encode what's the offset at which we draw the entity um, which I'm going to explicitly put here now and they encode which pass is it in which I believe the way that we factored it makes that part in principle not necessary although we're still kind of using it so let's put this wrapping offset in here and when we um, Actually, you know what else? Let's change this viz output option because it shouldn't be optional because everybody uses this now. Okay, so we're going to put that. We have to move it. It's before the code. It's just that was a thing that made sense while we were in transit from one method of doing it. Like the reason it was optional was because we were calling it in two different modes. Okay. And now we only call it in one mode because we finished that. Now also, um, let's, let's take this out for a minute. Okay. Also we ask if viz output is set, which we no longer need to do. So we can delete this code. Okay, and same here, same, same. And that's probably worth just checking in once we get this working. Okay, that parameter's in the wrong place. Left some out after code parameter. You are correct, but it's a strongly typed programming language. We're not in JavaScript, we're all good. We're not in JavaScript. I'm sure somebody's thinking, but, but, but you could totally do this game in the browser. Okay. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, I think we check that in. And then we do the next thing. Easy, sometimes you just take the easy W's, right? Cleanups on visibility star. Small cleanups. Okay. Now, wrapping offset, we're going to do wrapping offset. When we add to viz output, we're going to put offset. Okay, and we're going to get rid of the viz, the index later, right?
Okay, so there we go. We are not using this offset yet. So now when we go um, here, okay. So we are adding now one time per offset. We didn't used to do this. We used to set flags. Now we're literally adding the entry, I think, still. Yes, we just literally frickin' add it. Um, okay, so render entity that was in draw so why were we dumping this there must have been some <laughs> compiler bug okay so we pass an entry and we're going to be computing the offset here somewhere and I do not think that this is the way to go. This is not the way. The Mandalorian does not think this is the way. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to set. So now offset is no longer in the bit indexes. I should have made a get bit index function like they told me in computer school. Um, <clears throat> but now, instead of iterating to get the offset, we're just gonna get it out of the entry. Um, <clears throat> okay. So now this is this is a scary change. This is a scary change. We can just delete that by the way. Um why Dude, I don't, oh, I see. That was for the mesh. All right, same thing here. So we're changing the meaning of the bits. It no longer encodes the wrapping offset. It just encodes which view. Which viewpoint index. And then later, we'll get rid of that part even. Okay. Look at all these. Okay, um, 
we're going to be able to remove offsets. They should not be relevant by the time we get to this function. I think. Okay. Um, now, other people who compute bit index. So most of the, let's just check here again. Make sure we changed all of these to remove the offset index. We did not get this one. Okay, wait, this is update point light parameters. This is different. Visibility dot point lights. Okay, we, we have to do something here. Fudge. You know what? We're going to let it be broken from a little bit. And why? Why? Because I want to make sure that the technique that I'm working, that I'm doing, works properly uh, for just regular meshes. Like most of the scenes that we're looking at don't even have point lights. So we can make sure that works and then we can come through and propagate that to here. Um, okay. That's the last bit index in this file. We have some in decals. Um, we're going to have to make sure decals work. To make sure they work. And we must capitalize our sentences because we're not millennials um, or Zoomers. I mean, it, by every generation, there's just going to be less and less coherent spelling and effort put into communication. So enjoy that. Uh, all right. So that's bit index. Uh, okay. No cap. So we have some stuff in light probe and then this bit index stuff is a totally different bit index. So light probe is the last one. Skip main probe because it's already in. <clears throat> Fill out GPU light probe. I sure hope this is right. We don't do a lot of light probes on wrapping levels yet anyway. I don't think. Okay, but no check-in test light probes to make sure they work. All right. Now what? Um... We need to go to visibility, our new file, and when we say set bit, right, um, add to viz output, this bit index now no longer has that. Okay.
Incrementally evolving a code base is a skill I've been building up for years. It's really kind of fun when you manage to do it. Offset is not a member of entry. Oh, it's called world wrapping offset. I'm going to have to change that a few times, I think. Is it called world wrap? World wrapping, what's it called? Wrapping offset. Okay, who else did that? I mean me, but where else did I do it? 1985. 246. Isn't it uh, good having a statically typed programming language where you just fucking... It tells you all the times that I was a bad person. Now, Rapaping, Rapapui, Rakakuni. <clears throat> Offset index. I, I don't even know what this means. We're going to worry about this later. I'm not even sure it's right. We're going to have to think about that. When you move the character in the animation plays, does it immediately set the current tile to be the one you just moved? Does it make it mid-animation? There is a whole frickin' five-hour talk between me and Sean Barrett about this on YouTube that I'm sure somebody can link you. It took me a long time to fucking figure out. It was There are some things about this game that make it hard. All right. So this this is working. Um, note that this is not a wrapping level, right? This is a wrapping level. It's still working. solve this level in a long time. Oh, I killed the warrior. Dang it. All right. Anyway. Anyway, you see the point. Look, it works. We're not even using the instancing. That instancing array is still there. Let me write that down. Instancing array is still there, but we are not we are not using it now. Okay. Um I mean this is a pretty good okay, let's go back and look at a couple more regular vanilla levels. How do you magically remember the names of properties, functions, vars, etc.? Uh, yeah, you just you just know your code. Level um, 
error one. That's great. Level. I don't like that one frame of gunk. Uh-oh. Okay, this is messed up. Um, it seems to have to do with point lights. We're not that surprised because I was like, oh. All right. So this is a bugaboo. Basic entity rendering is working, but this part is not. And that's approximately what we expected. Um, but I don't think that's about light probes. I think that's just let's uh let's run that again real fast. What would I say are the steps one should take? I mean I've been doing it the past couple of days, so I'm not sure I'm not sure what the question is. I've been showing exactly how to do it. Anyway, so we have a light source down here that is not a well it is appearing here okay that's interesting um maybe because we're not in wrapping mode what if we wrap ah see if we it, there you go. Having the the greatest thing when you're trying to debug a problem is to like have a very simple repro that you understand. So basically this, you know, when we're in the game, we draw the level in wrapping mode. But when we're in the editor, we don't because it you kind of want to choose what you see, right? So, um, here, as soon as we start wrapping, we lose our point light somehow. So we can look at that, but first I'm going to make more tea water.
also, now the reason this is strange, by the way, is because, oh, maybe it's not strange. Let's actually see. So we're going to put horizontal wrapping. So we probably draw a left scene, middle scene, right thing, scene, although I'm not sure about that. Does it happen over here? Um, yes, although we're not really seeing the shadows, I guess. Wait. No, I mean, it's not really shining on this stuff either. Like that light is kind of working. Here, neither one is. And then here, neither one is as well. OK, anyway, we need to look at what happens with the point lights. Like, what are we doing in here with point lights? That's not OK. It's probably this part, right? Oh, remember when I said no check-in point lights are broken? Remember when I typed that, guys? Remember, remember the good old days when I said no check-in point lights are broken? It's almost like I actually knew something. Guys, today is just a good day. I'm chilling in my nice town in Florida, which will be nice for a while until we get into nuclear war with Russia, which hopefully won't be for at least a couple months. Um, I'm doing fun graphic stuff in a programming language that I worked on for years and that is behaving very well. I just love programming in it so much more than C++. And point lights are broken, but we can fix them. Like it's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Problem is now I can't find my spoon though. I need to get hot cinnamon spice tea out. I don't, I don't know where my spoon went. Wait, is it under, ah, there it is. There it was hiding under a notepad. Always look under the notepad for your spoon. Boom, hot cinnamon spice. I used to go to Borderlands Cafe in San Francisco back when that existed. And I would get hot cinnamon spice tea because it's the good tea. In fact, I'm in Indie Game the Movie in that location working. It is quite possible that I was drinking hot cinnamon spice tea at that time. Okay. Now it's actual Borderlands, yeah. Funny how that happens. All right, point lights are broken. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that this was hard. Maybe I just didn't know what to do at the time. Maybe I saw that and I was like, I don't know, I don't know, guys. It's 
Let's go downstairs. Hey, look, guys. See, the point lights work again. On a wrapping level. How fucking great is it? See, life is good, guys. Life is real good. I don't like this first frame crapola that's happening. We're going to have to figure that out. But... Um, So, point, wrapping, 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 point. Oh, let's, uh, it's like we're sort of seeing outside the universe right now. Um, wrapping, left to right. Boom. Okay, interestingly, the shadow map, is not correctly applied. I'm not sure if it ever was, um, but it might have been. See this? This is real messed up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run last night's build on my laptop, and I'm going to see I'm going to see if it's messed up like that. Is this newly broken? Because this, this is a thing that's not going to matter in a lot of cases, except it will matter in some cases. Okay. Oh, this was already broken from other things. This was before I debugged the cookie situation. Um, although maybe I could still, oh right, because I could make the things not be invisible and I can test it that way. All right, so downstairs, I know you can't see this, but it's fine. Downstairs, we're gonna look at the invisibles. There we go, we're gonna wrap horizontally. We're gonna zoom over here. It also doesn't work. So this, uh, this does not have to do with any of the new changes. It is a bug that was already in the system, and it is not that surprising. Okay, so bug. Bug on wrapping levels. Um, Point lights with dynamic shadows do not seem to draw the, do not seem to project the shadows properly during the wraps. This is not related. Well, I don't know if I can absolutely say it's not related to my recent changes. Um, because it might have broken earlier. So I'm just going to write this as a bug and not speculate. Okay. Anyway, though, like I think, I think we're kind of okay here. We got rid of these offset loops. So now, everywhere that I said no check-in. And let's remove the offsets right here, by the way. Offsets. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Update spotlight. Where is that, by the way? Room, oh, room highlighting. Why does this have offsets? That I think that was just out of habit. Because it, it doesn't make sense to me to put there. Update spotlight. Get rid of that. 
Um, Okay, we're going to think about that later. Not really relevant to what we are doing right now. Okay, so we've got a bunch of no check-ins that are just things commented out. So I'm writing down things to factor out or delete. We have the flags. The existence of the flags is going to go away next, I think. And then there's that instancing array, which mm, we might just change max instances to one. Boom, I'm Boom Holio. My name is Boom Holio. Oh, decals, we need to make sure they work. And light probes, we need to make, okay. So let's, uh, we were sort of testing light probes successfully upstairs here. So, remember this, remember this. Let's take this guy. See this guy? We can see all these nice greenies over here reflected. That's pretty great, right? These are now going to become a different color. All right? But we look in the light probe, and they're not purple. Why not? Because the light probe is old. We update it. I don't know why that takes so long. Is it like, what's it doing? The first time it takes a long time for some reason. There we go. They're purple, guys. Look at that. Okay, however, however, look at the sky in that light probe. It does not look to me like a sky. So we are perhaps not rendering the sky in the light probe. Did I not see that before? Anyway, though, the, okay. So actually one of the things to check while we are here, let's go into non-wrapping mode. Oh, like, look, dude, it's just that we're in a universe. We're in zebra universe now. Okay. We're going to have to fix zebra universe. That's, that's a problem. All right. So here, see this red gate. It's on the next layer over. So we want to make sure that we see that when we update the light probe. Although, oh, maybe uh, I, it's a gameplay object, so maybe we don't draw it in light probe. I don't understand why this takes so long, because we're literally rendering one frame, or eight frames. Ooh. Ooh. Is this related to zebra effect? Cast bounds check fail. Constant buffer indices. Instance index. Um, is that a using? So Visual Studio doesn't understand using. 
Okay. So it zero CB instances. This looks like a minus one to me, but it's unsigned. Allocate constant buffer instances. This is I sort of feel like So it's weird because, okay, we were talking about mesh instances and because, oh God, I should pour my tea. Because the word instance is being thrown around, um, it sounds like the same thing, but like this is different because the shader system has like instances of shader components in them. And so what we're looking at is like there's just some code for um, when you're handling rendering, you need to store the data places, right? And where does it come from and, and all that? Let's just look at we're rendering a mesh. Okay. Rendering an entity. It's a guy. We're rendering a guy. And we're doing the silhouette pass, which is relatively. Um, no, because the outline pass. I don't know if this was modified when we do outline pass. OK. Okay, so we're rendering the light probe. We're rendering... Okay, this is already kind of fucked, guys. Um, when we're rendering a light probe, we should not be doing character outlines or... Uh, Yeah, see, there's one instance of the entity, but this other instance thing that we're talking about is like a different thing. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't be drawing character interiors on light probe anyway. Now, maybe that just means we'll have this bug somewhere else. I don't understand why these are full integers, by the way. Like, why are these not bits? But maybe this number means something. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, so is there like render layer? Okay, let's figure out where this is. Character interiors, render frame. Oh boy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. 
Is that a dot? I never know in C++. Oh, that's interesting. Can we actually do this? Fourteen. Okay, this is weird. Because we're in code. We're in code where we claim. That this is set, but then it's not. And I don't believe that this code is threaded in any way. It sure as hell better not be. Um, so at this point, I kind of don't know how we're here. Also, this offset index is like chapping my hide. So, I don't know why we're here. Unless this is changing while we're here. Okay, I am going to add some information here for debugging. Okay. But this may be any way related to the zebra effect. So we want to, the zebra effect is very obvious. them. Dang it, guys. How did we not even compile since that? Oh, my God. Um, that's a thing that'll confuse you, by the way, is if you like make a bunch of changes and then you work on other stuff for a while, and then it's like, oh, those changes weren't saved. Wait, what? Okay, this one we can get rid of. Okay. So I think zebra effect is still going to be happening.
Okay. What about in the editor? A zebra effect happening. Yes. Yes. But in the game, zebra effect is not happening, but we're also not really getting a sky at all. And I believe, I believe we are supposed to see sky entity. And we are not. Now we were just fine for a long time. And I, I did some stuff. Right. We have some explicit sky thing. Now I did delete an offset from here. From here. Is that the only sky thing? So this is around line 2009. If it's a sky, we had world offset and we were adding it. And I just got rid of that ad. Um, so now, the, oh, see, the thing is, I think we're maybe just setting the parameters wrong. Let's investigate. Let's investigate. Let us f discover the buge. Buge. Why are we not loading? Load, please. OK, the buge is that we are seeing this crazy stuff. So if it's a sky, now we're iterating over all the views here, which I don't love that. Um, okay, but, but we only would have got here, all right, we only would have got here if we're authorized because of that bit checking. 
Shadow map dynamic. Fuck you. Why are we drawing the sky into shadow map? We'll worry about that in a little while. Um, I think, I think it's because the sky is going into the visibility list. All right. Anyway, shadow map, uh, main view. All right. So I'm going to write down sky and shadow map as a thing I want to investigate, but we actually only care about the main view anyway. Drawing this guy into the shadow map costs us fill rate, but probably doesn't affect visuals in a meaningful way. Okay, so entity parameters. Normal transform, is neg scaled, entity color, effect color, mesh center, entity random, mesh extent. Light map parameters. Like most of this, we don't need at all. Um... Entity color. That really doesn't seem very good, but that's probably not used. Honestly, none of this is probably really used. Object to world matrix is probably fine. So this, we're drawing this as just like a sphere around the camera. So this is strange. This could be, it could be that we introduced a new bug. It could be that like we're exhibiting a bug that already is here. Because like whatever that metal surface bug thing is, is unknown. This could be another manifestation of the same problem of like, maybe st stuff's not initialized. Maybe we don't. Why is instances of matrix? Unfortunately, no one can tell you what the matrix is.
Just fix the bug. Well, yes, I would like to do that. I would sure like to just fix the bug. You know, at some point, the fastest way to fix this is to do a Roberta Williams and try to resolve it in a slightly different way. Because um, if my goal is to get rid of these flags, I could imagine in I could imagine instead of taking the product of the flags, it's just um, it's just that there's two separate fields and the reason that would be good is because we could choose to ignore offsets or not on a case-by-case -case basis. Although, in theory, that's what I did here. So the problem that I have is I don't know exactly when zebra effect began. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was this time. Let's just, I'm going to look at it directly a little bit more. And if, if we can't figure it out, um, we'll revert to Williams and there's like smaller, more incremental changes we can do. Because sometimes I just prefer to do that rather than bang my head against a bug. Anyway, instances count one. That is correct. Right now, I'm just, I'm just looking at the numbers. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Yeah, you know what? I want to back this out. Now that we know what to look for, I want to back it all out. And we're just going to redo it because it'll be faster and we might even learn more. So... Because, okay, so the thing that we did, we could actually do this room highlighting one real fast separately. Um, but the thing that we did was, you know, we went in, um, uh, into visibility and we added this wrapping offset, right? And we set it here and we're just going to do that again. And we'll actually just check that in with that in there. And then we shouldn't have any real new problems. And then like the thing about this bit index, we don't actually, I don't, I don't think we actually have to change the bit index. Like in theory, we're doing that to prevent, because we want to remove the bit index completely anyway. So monkeying around with it is actually a little bit not, not the way. All right, so we're going to revert to Williams all this. This one thing about going to Kung Fu school is you're no longer allergic to doing reps. So we're just doing rep number two. Okay, so we're going to run this. Was zebra effect on the laptop? No. Um, 
Oh, well, so here, okay, so that sky is flagged not visible in game. Question it, it should be visible in editor. Shit. Guys, zebra effect was already present. Okay, now I do have to go check on the laptop. I thought, I thought, um, I thought it was caused by the new stuff. Cause we'd been baking Remember when I baked the light probes and it was like all pink? So. All right. Um, okay. In last night's build, we do not have this problem. We do not have zebra effect. Okay, so now we are going to see. We are going to witness the power of this fully armed and operational zebra effect detector. So we're just going to start rolling back. Not permanently, but just to discover which change. So let's go back to like. Two, four, five, seven, one. This was like the last major thing we did. I feel like, oh, wow. We've been kind of hanging out for a while. We gotta, we gotta make more progress. All right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go back there. It's taking way too long, please. Oh, no. Oh, we hadn't updated to pull down this. See, see all this audio stuff that happened today? We didn't have any of these files, so we weren't even. Yeah, that's why it's taking a little bit. That's why it's taking a little bit. And we can just limit this. We believe Zebra was already in that first bake. OK, well, that can help us narrow the problem down. I should have done this just on the source code. Sometimes these files, I need to talk to the audio dude about how to organize the files because like sometimes it's like a freaking gigabyte file. <laughs> and it's like, dude, we can't do this all the time. Like it, it's interfering with my, see, this is the problem when people, so Subversion does big assets better than a lot of things, but we still have this issue where it's like, look, I'm trying to work right now. I have a very good internet connection and there's a fucking giant file coming down and it's not good, right? Like game development is actually, it's a constant battle against issues like this. And now, so because Subversion doesn't, like it doesn't tell you what the big file is until after. So you're like, what file are we working on? And you don't even know. All right. So we got that, 24571. Um, so we suspect that zebra is still going to happen here.
Do you implement backside culling based on normals? Backface culling is not normally done with normals. It's done with uh, winding, polygon winding. Um, okay, so that is not, that is zebraed out. Hey, factor sky stuff, so we don't need to be so weird about it. That might be where it happened. Let's go back to here, 24563. All right. Does it make sense to have a separate repo for assets? No, it does not. That causes more problems than it solves. You would have to be on a very, very big game with a deliberate asset policy to allow that, which takes work. We're still zebraed. Wow. Wait, did I did I rebuild? I did. Okay. See, this is what happens. Sometimes you don't notice the zebra. Two, four, five, six, one. Let's go back to two, four, five, five, nine. Like the problem is your code expects data to be there, right? And as you were, if people are actually working on the code, you'll have code that expects data to be there. And if it's not fucking there, you're in trouble. Dude, we are zebraed out. How is this so messed up? Well, good thing we're finding it. Zebra. Okay, wait, guys. When I look on my laptop, I wonder if it's like a driver issue. Okay, the laptop is at 24566, supposedly, which I believe is later than what we just did, right? So why does the laptop not zebra? And this does zebra. The answer is maybe I accidentally messed up a data asset on disk in some way, maybe. Laptop does not zebra. Try X64 build. See, I feel like the zebra only recently started because I think we would have noticed it. Okay, this is just X64 build. Zebra. Not zebra. Not zebra. Okay. Do we have files? Maybe I shouldn't have reverted to Williams to all those changes, guys. We we have no local changes.
Okay, I'm going to update the laptop to the current version as another sanity check. Now that's going to take a minute because we're going to be pulling down those audio files. And in fact, it may take longer because the laptop's on Wi-Fi. But I'm going to update that. And we're going to see if that zebras. And I don't think it will. If it doesn't, we're just going to write it off as like a different weird bug that may be related to the metal thinger. Let's see if anyone has said anything about this. Okay, um, weird, I am about to remove the bit count stuff, but on my side, uh, never went over 128, what level specifically, question mark. So this should go away. All right. It, it actually updated already for some reason. It went faster. Yeah, I have no local change. I mean, maybe there's an unversioned file that is like causing something, right? Like, who the hell knows? So we could go to revert. Like, when you don't know what's going on, really a lot of different things could be going on. Okay, wait. Now a zebra on the laptop. But I thought I told you I was at 24566. Maybe we. Wait, what? Now I'm really confused because I'm looking in my command back history buffer and it's got all sorts of things. So I just went back to 24566 specifically and I'm looking for the zebra. No zebra in 24566 specifically. Okay, what if we do that here? That one version. I don't think it's an unversioned item because we just reproduced it on the laptop, but look at all these weird weirdo files. Why is there no like open in folder? Open containing folder. It's so useless, dude. All right. Um, uh, the sphere mesh is a file, I think. Two, four, five, six, six, no zebra. So I think we had no zebra. 
and then we zebra'd for a long time. And then we had no zebra for a brief moment, and then we did again, right? Because like I said, we just did a bunch of a bunch of revisions. So this one, but I did two, four, five, six, three before, right? I feel like this one's gonna zebra, or one of them. I feel like if we keep going backward, we'll zebra again. Okay, so that's why it was hard to break. Okay, so two, four, five, six, six. And then, so let's verify again that this does not zebra. The non-zebra is not, it is rendering the sky. It's gray. I don't fucking know if the color's right, okay? Guys, I'm tr trying to figure this out. <laughs> I don't know how to know if the color is right. Aside from, like it looks reasonable. Although it does maybe look a little too gray compared to what's in this light probe. That is true. Like if I update the light probe, it gets a lot more. Okay, so the color's probably wrong anyway, which is a clue. So maybe the color's wrong no matter what because we're not filling something out. And it's just as we refactor things around, whatever garbage state ends up in there is, uh, is causing us to do different things, right? See, this is weird. Like if I go to, which one's the sky entity? This is the sky entity here. So like this one's fine. So why is it not fine in the other one? What if I delete this? Then, then we look like that. So it's, it's pretty weird. I kind of don't know. We could just start looking at the sky shader. This could be a good opportunity for me to learn about that. Right? All right. So we're going to just update all the way because we think, in theory, it's all broken. It's just exhibiting differently. So the gray sky is not that it's fixed. It's just that the brokenness is appearing different. Does SVN have a bisect feature? Like, I've heard that Git has bisect, but I honestly don't even know how that's supposed to be helpful. Like, what does it do for you? What does Git bisect frickin' do? Okay, so we are clearly zebraing, right? So we could actually start going into the shader, if, if I even know where it is. Sky general? OK, 
Okay, that didn't happen. Did we load it? Yeah. Hey guys, look, the zebra's fixed, except, oh. I bet we're drawing the sky more than once and it's like Z fighting. Doesn't that look like a Z fighting pattern, guys? Does not the Z, the zebra, is it zebra fighting? Is Are we looking at zebra fighting? What if we don't even depth right? That didn't matter. I don't even know for sure that we update those correctly. Okay. So we're drawing the sky in the sky atmosphere shader. This is like the flag of Japan or something. Um, well, we shouldn't even be drawing it more than once. So if the spheres are misaligned, yeah, that could be. But then why are we even drawing it more than one time, right? And, okay, why are we drawing it more than one time in, like, different shaders, question mark, right? Like, what is happening? Okay, so now there is the, okay, in do one frame, we're going to set a breakpoint up here so that we know when we get back to the next frame. So we're here, we have um, shadow map. We still have to investigate that. Why is it drawing in the shadow map? Okay, but shadow map again. Shadow map, shadow map, cube shadow map. Is the sky visible in game? It's not. Wait, are we in the editor right now? We're supposed to be in the editor. Okay, hang on. We are not yet in the editor. So we're, we're not drawing the sky. Wait, guys, now it's a beautiful red sky. What is even going on? Now it's a beautiful. I fixed it. Oh, it's a different level. That's why. <laughs> Okay, so I suspect it's that we're drawing the sky multiple times and that is having bad effects. It is badge, all right? It is badge. Okay, let's get back our Japan flag. Okay, so now <laughs> could there be a culling issue? I mean, I've been editing culling all day, so absolutely. It's just like there's this weird thing. So my argument would be that the way it was done before was really not good because 
you kind of don't want you don't want the sky to be like in your scene as just another entity being drawn, right? So we, we actually would like to factor the sky out anyway and draw it one time. Um, that would be the right thing to do. It's just, I, was, I didn't want to make that big of a change yet because I didn't want to break stuff. But if stuff is already broken, that might be the right change. But let's, let's at least, we're going to go with investigatory mind a little bit. Okay, so here we are at the start of the frame. Here we go. Um, shadow map, shadow map, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Okay, main view, um, main view. Are we iterating over? Like, why are we in main view twice? Are we in the entities list twice? Let's, um, oh, I know what it is, guys. That is exactly what's happening. So visibility main. Goes over the things in the draw list and puts them. In. The. Thingamabobber. It puts them in this, uh, in the entries. Sky is getting in the entries. And then also we're adding it explicitly anyway. So I bet if I do the following thing, we have this do sky. Like literally, I bet this fixes the problem, maybe. And if so, no, there's one sky entity that's being issued twice. And then maybe the states are overlapping. I don't know for sure. That's my theory. Okay, well, yes. Okay, so now, now here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. And this is why I wanted to change the way this is working anyway. Here's the entity representing the sky, okay? So you'll note we're drawing the sky, and there's that entity. If I get to the point where this is out of the scene, the sky will disappear. Right, it's gotta be like well out though. There we go. Why? Because we're calling it. All right, so like, why does it have such a big radius, by the way? Anyway, if I move it way up, here, let's, because we're in debug build, let's turn off all the dudes. Um, so now I can look up and it's still there. Why? Because it's in the camera. You can barely see it because it's stealth, right? But if I move it down, so see that? Up, down, up. It's just, it's getting called out of the frustum or not. Because it's being treated as a regular entity, which we absolutely do not want. Now, I think this is actually the right sky color for this level, maybe. I don't know why. Oh God, right. See, this is a different material than this one. It might be that we just had a different sky material when these light probes were baked. Let 
Yeah, it says more than one entity on current floor because um, I think I dragged the lower floor one up. Anyway. There were two sky things highlighted. Yes, there are two sky entities on the level. Um, however, only one is supposed to be used at a time. Okay. I kind of want more tea. Let me get chocolate snacks. Back in a second. Okay, now, another reason, hmm. kind of melted. Okay, another reason to have a lot of control over something like your sky entity is it just fills a lot of pixels. So you would like to draw it as the last opaque thing so that you z-reject all the pixels. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to delete this. OK. We're going to go to draw here. We're going to assert this should be handled via other means. OK. What are those other means? Well, this is going to be the part that's maybe a little bit, a little bit hard. just because I don't quite know how this goes. Um, offsets nonsense for sky. Here we go. OK, so render sky entity. OK. Gonna do this again. We make a matrix, we key encode batch. Where does that even come from? It comes from here. Like I'm not quite sure because this system, it's not too new, but I haven't used it very much. The new like way of talking to the backend renderer that I am not totally sure. What to do. OK, so we're, we're going to say you only 
call this explicitly. So the entity parameters we're going to refresh the entity parameters. for the sky. Um, where does that come from? It's up here somewhere. All this mirage pass and whatever. You know what? Let's let's put an E. Just just so we can do this. Okay. We've got entity parameters. We've got an object to world matrix. We render a mesh. Okay, whatever. So, is baking we don't have? Let's just see if that builds. Continue. That's not going to work. Return. Okay. Now, I'm sort of a little bit passing the wrong thing. So remember this drawable set, those of you who saw it, we're just gonna put a sky on there. Uh, you know what, let's just put, put the set. Is that the only caller? water shore. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is down here no check-in, do this for other bake stuff. If set.sky, render sky entity, sky info.view. And assuming that works, we'll do it for the light probe and the shore map and the baker, which will look like copy pasta, but etc. Okay, so now when we make the drawables, remember this?
we want to make sure it does not So sky should be frickin' down here. And that, you know, we might have ramifications. Okay, drawable set. Where did I put drawable set? Set ski. Okay, now we never assign anything to that variable. So when we run this, we should get no sky at all. Not even a zebra. Okay, well. What happened here? Oh, because I didn't, right. I didn't filter it out. So this is good, though. It's good that I put this assertion here. OK, wait, wait. It's weird. Oh, because we're in the editor. Yeah, OK. Oh, wait, it's actually, this is actually fine. We do, in the editor, want to draw the mesh for the sky. So, uh, so we actually don't want that assert because like, remember when I was looking at the little sphere mesh? We want to draw that, and this is where that happens. So what we don't want to do is do the other special sky rendering in there. In fact, let's not say render sky entity. Let's call it render sky because it's different. Um, so we're going to render the sky. And now we're not even going to be doing that yet is the thing, right? Because we're, we're, that sky pointer should always be null still because we ain't set it yet. Sugary snacks. Hell yes. Dude, sugar gets a bad rap in our culture, and it kind of should, but also dude. Okay, there's no, this is like what the universe will look like in one trillion years. Okay, now, now we have to actually set that pointer. And that'll happen in the this is moderately slow, right? Or no, in the, in the this is very slow. So drawables init one entity. Actually, we don't even want to do it here. OK. 
Okay, here's what we're going to do. If it's a sky... Okay, if drawables.sky log error trying to put more than one sky in the drawables entity string drawables.sky entity string sky. E. Okay, else Drawables dot sky is down e sky. Okay. Because like I said, so is the whole thing about there could be more than one sky based on what level you're on and all this. Hey, look. We're drawing the sky. Let's go back to that shader and take out my hackety hack. Um, there we go, guys. Oh, wait, this is not even the level, though. This is the level that had the zebra. And now it doesn't have zebra. Now, Yes, this sky is grayer than what's in the light probes, but I suspect that's because the artist changed it. That's like a discussion that we're going to have, I think, separately or something. Um, but here we go. So that is good. So now I wish I hadn't revert to Williams the other stuff because I'm going to have to go do all that again, but it won't take that long. Um, Let's go to mirror one. We have a sky here. It's all good. Oh, we're not drawing the sky in the light probe. So if I update this light probe, it's going to be the universe in 10 trillion AD. Yeah, see? So we have to do that. Render sky, render sky. Shore map, no sky. Baker, yes, sky. All right. So we need to now test the light probe and the baker, and I think they'll work. Info. Oh, right. Um, this is just. Uh, oh, this sucks. This kind of sucks. So the reason, so the thing is this call here renders, so those flags we were trying to get rid of are still in there. So this call renders entities for all of these. So I can't just like draw the sky one time. Like this has a, yeah, we'll, we'll get back there. Um, hopefully we don't, yeah. Okay. The other ones are all mono repo. Okay. Um, let's make sure those couple of things work and then, and then we're Gucci for now. And then I think I'll take a break and go out into the world and go to a coffee shop and do the bit flag thing or not because we have a crash.
breaker one nine, we have a crash. Over. All right. Render sky. V is null. Because I. So really, <laughs> okay, this should be organized differently anyway for these because if there's, if we're not doing the view, there's no point in rendering the entities. It's just, it was organized that way because that's the way the loop ones went. Um, Okay, we always have a main scene, so it's like not that bad. Oh, in reflections, we want to draw the sky too, guys. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Ta-da. Ta-da. Update. Hey, check it out. It's all blue-like. Kmart blue like special and uh, light panel bake. Why did that go so fast? I almost don't trust that that worked. Delete light maps. Uh, what's the light map mode? I don't remember. Okay, that's light map mode, I think. So now we're going to bake it again. No. I don't know. Bake. Okay. We're getting... We're getting different results, but I'm not sure again that that's wrong because I don't think... I don't think this level's been baked in a long time. Um, that said... This looks kind of fucked, so I might have broke the baker, guys. Um, um, I think it was behaving. Better before. It makes me very sad if I broke the baker. Because then I have to sit here and debug further. Although, as you can see, lots of these things, there's, there's some problems with regard to this water plane in the, why are there two water planes in this level? Oh, cause that one's invisible. All right. Um, I kind of don't like what I'm seeing here. Wait, why is the sky gone now? That would explain why the baker is...
Wait, what happened? Oh, oh never mind. It's not visible because we're not freaking drawing it. Okay. Um, I mean, here, do we have any light probes in the level? Let's test that again. Light probe. Oh, wait. Is it there? It's there. Oh, we do have a light probe. Let's update this one, though. Boom. So that is working fine. This one, we move it over here, we move it, we update it. That is working fine. So, the baker does not appear to be working fine. Or, I mean, it could just be that things are coming out way different, but kind of feel like the baker is a little hosed. I might have to compare. The data hasn't changed, so I should be able to compare on the laptop. Except the laptop is very updated, but I can crawl backward. Um, all right, one more time. Don't like that. Let's visually inspect the code. Oh, actually, let's uh, let's make sure we can see in the reflections. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell if you can see the sky in the reflection, but I feel like you can. I mean, I guess one way to A-B that is um, we could say we could be looking deep into the reflection around the mirror, and we select the sky, and we say not visible in game. That won't change how it looks in the editor, but if I control F11, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Anyway, um, Light probe, uh, Baker. I mean, we do say to render the sky. Now, it may not be the sky that's messed up is the thing. It could be that the Baker is hosed for some other reason. I want to check this in and then we'll sort of look around, right? Actually, here's a thing too. All right. Promise this is going to take longer to bake, but Yeah, that's what I'm going to do is like an underground bake. Why is this taking so long? All right. Okay, well. 
Oh, this is the wrong level. Okay. So remember, we were working on getting the lighting right down here and all these things with the little cookie and stuff. Now, um, here, if I go, so this is like light map bake view. Um, let's rebake this one. Now, the thing is, this is only like a one bounce bake and whatever, which might be different from how things were baked, but and we're in a debug build and there's like lots of entities that we're baking. So it might, it'll take an unknown amount of time. All right. Let's, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes we need to go do fun new things on our Twitch stream. So block terms and phrases. Thoughts on. All right. Just working hard at improving improving the channel this sure is taking a long time you know what oh well I think like I accidentally click the button again because it's literally rebaking for the same guy. I don't know the what happened over here is not reassuring. But, you know. Okay, what did we get? I mean, it does not match at all. But it doesn't look totally, it's like, look, it picked up some light from here maybe. Um, it picked up light from the side. It's a different amount of light, but like that could just be that it was buggy before. Like sometimes you don't know. Or <clears throat> it could be that the light, the point light is getting added to the point lights array multiple times. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to send people, what I actually want to do is finish my revamp of the flagging before I fix this. Uh, I think. Maybe not.
Um, so I think it's time for me to take a break. We've been going for four hours. And I'm up in the air about whether I should check this in and break the baker for a little bit. Um, I feel like there may be more than one problem with it. I feel like feel like we are getting very inconsistent results. But I think we're all, there is weird stuff like we're already rendering entities multiple times and whatnot. So, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it for a minute. I wonder if somehow for the baker it like matters when you do the sky because we're doing something weird. I don't think so because we just sort of did the sky randomly in the middle before. There's a bunch of stuff to clean up right here. All right, thanks everybody for coming by. Let's try real fast. It doesn't always work, but we could try to raid somebody in science and technology, software, software and game development, JavaScript, no TCS. Everybody's really into JavaScript, no TCS. Why do people put their editor first? What is wrong with literally everybody? Or is that the same guy? No, that's a different guy. What, is this a thing? Like, are people's... What? Like, we, we were looking at that yesterday. It was also somebody... And it was a different variant of VI, right? And it was like, it's a fashion statement, but, but like the thing to understand about this is if you're actually programming and doing something interesting, the editor is so uninteresting. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's a, very negative indicator that people think that the editor is worth putting in the title of their stream. That said, my streams <laughs> tend to have titles like it's a morbid time, so I really shouldn't talk. But it's just a very negative indicator. That's all I'm saying. He's working on Vim plugins. I don't think so because the other guy wasn't. Twenty twenty two AD Game Dev was beginning. That's a good title. See, this would be someone we can raid, except the whole the whole VTuber thing is an anti raid. Look at all the number of these that are happening. That's like a heavy anti raid indicator on its own. Tim Bodet is good. Where where are we at? Tim. I'm trying to search. Taking names and building games. Indie career tracker. 
Wait, he raided someone else. Some prep work for a UE4 tutorial. Okay, yeah, no. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. What about custom? This guy's always on fish break. Oh, wait, he's off fish break. Okay. Should we raid fish break? Let's do that. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming by. And uh, I'll see you later. I hope you're a mature audience. <laughs>